This video will get you started with Relay Sim Test. In order to make sure that everything is understandable, please follow the steps shown in this video from the very beginning. We are going to create a new test document by modifying an existing line topology. The navigation on the left already outlines our workflow from top to bottom. Please enter a title and then save the test document. In our first step, we are going to define our power system. Our topology will be aligned with a transformer in between two substations. Please remove all elements on the right-hand side by dragging a rectangle over them and pressing the delete key. You can add new elements to the topology by selecting them from the menu bar. In our case, we're adding a two-winding power transformer and a line element. Why are the elements yellow? The answer can be found in the error list. In this case, the transformer and the line have not been connected yet, and validation errors such as this must always be corrected in order to attain a functioning system. We're going to connect the transformer by moving the mouse to the terminal of the line end until the green indicator appears. Press the left mouse button and move the cursor towards the transformer element. Now, simply release the mouse button to draw the connection. Connect the line element with the node in the same way. Add a bus bar and connect the transformer to the bus bar. You'll notice that Relay Sim Test has automatically created a breaker and a node in between them. Now the transformer is connected properly and the highlighted area around it has disappeared. Add a VT and connect it to the node next to the D5 side of the transformer. Rename the VT. Add a CT between the node on the D5 side and the circuit breaker and then rename it. You can also set its polarity. Add a load behind the bus bar and connect it. So why are the transformer and the load yellow again? Because the voltage levels of the load and the transformer don't match. In order to correct this, select the transformer and click Propagate V. The voltage can also be propagated from infeeds and loads. Set the line impedances to the format that you are used to. Set the correct length of the line. And make sure its orientation is correct. Initially, its orientation remains the way that you drew it but it's vital to make sure that it's correct in order to define the position of a fault. The elements can also be labeled. Now add an additional protection device on the low voltage side of the transformer. Configure the relay by double-clicking it and choose all instrument transformers and switching devices connected to it. When you make a connection, you'll see the available signals for each device on the right-hand side. You can enter data, such as the manufacturer's name, under General Settings. You can also limit the output of currents and voltages in order to avoid damaging the relay. In the remaining sections, you can configure the relay's inputs and outputs in more detail. For instance, you can add a binary output and choose between dry or wet potential. When you're finished, return to the power system view by pressing the arrow button on the left-hand side. In order to verify that the data that's been entered will result in desirable simulation values, the steady state simulation can be used by selecting an element and clicking the pin needle to display its widget.
You can configure the widgets by clicking the small wrench in the header of each widget. When you make adjustments, for example to the load flow, the widgets will allow you to see the simulation values that have been changed right away. You can also verify fault situations. You can place faults onto a line, a transformer, a bus bar, or a node. Again, the values in the widgets will be updated immediately. As our second step, we configure our test sets by clicking the arrow button again. Relay Sim Test can work with different configurations. Each configuration can contain multiple test sets. In order to follow the remaining steps, your PC must be connected to the test set. In our example, we shall use two test sets, one local and one remote. First, let's deal with the local one. When the test set is connected to the PC, we can choose it as shown. A test set can be configured by double-clicking it. Deselect the relay that won't be connected to this test set to get a better overview of available relay signals. Now click on the relay voltage inputs and the test set voltage outputs and connect them. If you need higher voltages or currents from the test set outputs, you can select different amplifier configurations. Connect the relay current inputs to the CMC current outputs. For a detailed wiring scheme, click on the test set output. Connecting the binary inputs and outputs works the same way. The auto connect function provides you with a predefined configuration. Now we're going to connect our remote test set. Follow the same steps as shown before. After the successful test set connection, a wiring check is recommended in order to test your test setup configuration. Are the measured values on the device the output values that you expected to see? Now we are ready to prepare a test plan in our third step. Using the test manager, we add a test case and name it. Double click on the test case to open it. Again, we can use widgets to see the values present at certain states. For our test scenario, we're going to assume that a breaker will close and a fault will occur shortly afterwards. We're defining the breaker's initial state as open. And now, we're adding a breaker event. To see the values present during a certain state, click on the state in the time signal view. Now we're adding a fault to the line. It should occur 500 milliseconds after the breaker closes. If you want to see the fault impedances, turn them on in the widget. When the fault is selected, you can adapt the fault and see the values that have been changed in the relay immediately. Sometimes you will want to extend the simulation's duration in order to be able to measure all the binary events. Varying parameters is an efficient way to create test steps. For instance, we can create test steps by varying the fault type at 50 and 100% load. First, we're adding the fault type as a vary parameter and then the load. Three fault types and two different loads results in six test steps. 
The timing of the events is the same for all the test steps. When you click on a step, you'll see the values adapt in the time signal view and the widgets. To get automated time measurements for each test step, we define them in the Define Measurements dialog. We call our measurements Trip A, Trip B, and Start B. We want all these measurements to begin with the fault inception and to end with the respective relay command. In order to assess our test steps automatically as passed or failed, we apply assessment conditions to them. In each tap of the respective dialog, we enter appropriate maximum relay command times as an assessment condition. Finally, we are going to look at some properties that we can set for our test case. You can link a test set's configuration and define whether there should be pauses in between test steps. When you want to test protection functions like auto reclose, breaker failure, and switch on to fault, you may want to use the iterative closed loop feature. So let's output some values right now. We can either execute all the test steps or select a single test step. We hope this information was helpful and that you enjoy working with Relay SimTest.